Good day and welcome to this Focus on Special with me, Devil Dwarame. We are here at Gobero in Botswana at the US Africa Business Summit for 2023, where key investors, government officials, and heads of state have put their best foot forward for investment opportunities, not to only expand to the rest of Africa, but also cross border to the United States. Namibia was one of those countries who gathered some key industry players to put their best foot forward. Have a look. Minister, thank you so much for taking time to speak to me here at the U.S. Africa Business Summit. On that, uh, yesterday the Biden administration released a document. I just want to get your, your uh, views on that agreement. Yeah, thank you. It's, uh, I'm thankful and grateful that you invited me for um, saying our say here at this conference. Let me start with the Biden uh, administration's new take, as we understand it. Um, we believe that it is a step in, in, in the right direction. I think it's a very promising um, approach where the Biden administration makes a point that they want in the new partnership agreement with us, with Africa, uh, make it a people-centered uh, agreement where the wealth created through value addition is shared and rolled out to the people rather than um, for economic growth only. We, we believe that that principle that we are talking about a transformation um, aspect, that that transformation is a transforming people's lives rather than only economies. So that, that, that is the principle of it. We agree with it, but we must also then make sure that the people we are talking about are not only the American people, but that the African people have an equal share, or an equitable share in that development and in that transformation of their life. Uh, Africa sits with a poverty problem and an inequality problem. If we want to solve it through trade and through value addition and through industrialization, the value added must be shared with our people. We, we must be the owners of that value, partially at least, so that we can um, address poverty and inequality problems that we have. Uh, Namibia is a special point in case where we, we are a high middle income country, but we have an extremely skewed economy that comes still out of the apartheid area where we have deep pockets of poverty um, and that needs to be addressed. And the only way we can address it is through making better value out of our resources, whether it's renewables in agriculture or tourism or non-renewables in mining. We have to get a better price for that. And there is for sure a developmental price tag on that that we should bargain for. And we hope that that is part of the new directive that um, President Biden has given. On that, though, uh, you would think that uh, due to the global conflict, uh, Africa uh, could learn from this opportunity to rather man or process their own agriculture sectors and become more exporters and less dependent on, uh, on imports from other countries. Do you see this Biden administration uh, agreement fostering that? Well. Let me start with your first part of the question, and that is um, how we see that it could impact on agricultural produce and ag agricultural value chains. Our take is that we have to move away from the paradigm where we said food security is guaranteed through trade, where you use surplus trade to buy food if, if it is so needed. We believe that the geopolitical situation has shown clearly that one cannot rely on the global trade anymore. There are, there are um, factors that will just close borders, stop that trade, and therefore we have to go back to the food self-sufficiency model. We must, in fact, localize the total value chain that brings about food self-sufficiency and security in our own economies. We cannot rely outside. There are still opportunities to export 
foodstuffs, but it must be exported, in our opinion, in a um, finished mode. It cannot be a raw material, it must be a finished commodity that is, that is traded with. And we hope that the, the agreement or the trade policy or industrialization policy, this partnership that is under discussion, embraces that, that we cannot, um, or that we as, as sovereigns have the absolute responsibility to make sure that food self-sufficiency is guaranteed. On, on the back of that, and also, or in, in, including in that, is the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. With you being here at the US Africa Business Summit, which countries do you want to invest or expand your agricultural sector to? Well, first we want to expand our own uh, agricultural capacity, and that uh, brings about, or that is, there's a need for infrastructure development, for mechanization, for for technology inputs, that is where the partnerships must come. We don't have the technology. We must develop our skills based on the technology and the technological solutions that can improve production. That is where we need foreign and especially American partnerships. But when it comes to the farming operations itself, we believe they must be localized and they must remain localized. And the the, the export potential that we would then develop should feed in the African free trade arrangement that is now um, almost there so that we um, utilize that market opportunity. And I'm saying it because of the fact that the developed world, America and Europe, have still serious subsidies in the agricultural sector for their um, production of foodstuffs. And we will struggle to be competitive in that area. So the African Free Trade Arrangement makes it possible for us to lessen our um, dependency on subsidized goods and we can then trade amongst each other. Do you have any incentive programs uh, offered to your lo to for your localized uh, farmers in your communities to be part or to expand on, 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 on the back of the trade? We anticipate that subsidies have a role in, in, in developing these value chains. But our fiscal space, our pockets are not as deep as the ones of the Americans or the Europeans. So we cannot subsidize to the same extent. So I believe it is correct to say that we will never be competitive against them. Our production costs are in any case higher because we are in, an, in a very dry country. So we can subsidize to be competitive maybe with our neighbors, but not with, with the industrialized world. Ma'am, thank you for taking time to talk to me. I don't want, I don't, I'm not going to take much, too much of your time. I just want to know uh, if in your sector for trade investment and facility, which uh, area, sectors, are you looking to promote here at the US Africa Business Summit? Thank you very much. We are excited to be invited to, to take part in this very magnificent event. And we are here to promote Namibia in its totality. Uh, but we're looking at the sectors that met us as it now. Uh, our oil and gas and our energy, of course, agriculture, tourism and mining, those are the ones that we have, have prioritized. However, at every platform we are also promoting all other sectors and all other activities that Namibia have to offer. Now I want to know, on the back of the AGOA agreement, it's coming to an end in 2025. Now obviously the countries are looking at uh, reassign or assigning back onto that. I just want to get your view on the AGOA agreement, your steps towards it and maybe your steps uh, post that. First and foremost, we appreciate that we were given the opportunity to be one of the 35 AGOA eligible countries. And as much as AGOA started way back in 2005, Namibia as a country did not have a strategy in place as then. And in 2019, when we attended uh, the forum that took place in Ivory Coast, uh, we came back to work with maximum speed in ensuring that we, we get to get our house in order and then we worked on our implementation and utilization strategy which we then launched in May 2021. 
So far, the success story I can tell is that we were able to export our meat, our beef, uh, our beer, our charcoal, and marbles in the short-term category of products that we were looking at. Our ca products are categorized in two, three groups. They are short-term, they are intermediate-term, and then they are long-term. And now we are working on the intermediate term where we, we, we are looking at our fruits. And when we are, we are talking about higher value fruits, we're talking about the grapes and the dates and, and so many others that we are still to classify under that category. And then we are also then looking in the same category on how to develop our, our leather products for export, which we have a, a competitive uh, kind of uh, advantage already just need to, to perfect that for export and then we are also then looking at the sectors that have got to do with uh, handicrafts, arts and, and, and all, all materials that are made by hands and, and then in, the term, in terms of the long term which is now looking at three to five years yeah, we are looking at our minerals, the rest of the minerals and perhaps the, the green hydrogen that we are talking about and ammonia would be ready by then uh, because we envisage it to be re ready for export by then. Uh, our initiatives are looking at uh, ensuring that we should be able to produce more for our own consumption and for export. Do you see that strategy different to the, your strategy with Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement? Not very much. They are aligned. They are aligned, but as for AGOA, there is a specific time period that is specified. And as it now, uh, it's supposed to be ending by 2025. We are also advocating for an extension because of those specific items that I have just listed. We will not be able to export them if this arrangement have to come to an end by 2025. And, and, and henceforth, we are saying, we, we are also calling for an extension while rolling out our implementation strategy and utilization strategy as we have crafted it so that it takes us to that time. Uh, thanks for taking time to talk to us. You've got an uh, investment seminar happening here at the US Africa Business Summit. The minister mentioned uh, two specific sectors, the energy and oil and gas as an investment opportunity. Are those any sectors that you are going to focus on today? So, Diavol, thank you. It's great to be here with you and the uh, CNBC team. Uh, Namibia is a country of diverse opportunities and currently uh, we're working on our diversification strategy. We come from an era where we have been heavily reliant on, our, uh, on natural resources but specifically focused on mining. And we have seen that while those, uh, that sector has done well from Namib for Namibia and it contributes significantly to our GDP, we are, because we have not uh, really played a significant role in the value chain, we have not seen significant progress in terms of the fight uh, against unemployment inequality and poverty and therefore as we go forward looking at these new sectors we want to make sure that we do not only rely on those sectors but we diversify our economy but yes talking about today's session specifically our presentation from NIPDB will talk about four sectors we'll talk about energy sectors and energy sectors covers oil and gas it covers renewable energies including green hydrogen it covers Namibia uranium which actually then plays to the nuclear energy and a few others and then yes we are also talking about mining sector. We, mining sector is the largest sector to, in Namibia. It contributes the significant value to GDP. But we are also talking about tourism and agriculture. So we're talking about diversity, but yes, there is a focus panel that is going to talk about the energy sector for Namibia. How are you going to help facilitate uh, the economic ties between the two regions? And the regions I'm talking here is US, uh, US itself and obviously Namibia. So how would you facilitate that uh, investment opportunity? Yeah, so the, uh, the investment opportunities where we are currently, Namibia and other African countries have got natural resources. So Namibia, for example, yes, we've got green hydrogen and we also got critical raw materials such as graphite and lithium, cobalt and others that are needed in the energy transition. We know, of course, other countries have got those resources, but we have seen that many countries such as Europe, USA, Japan, Korea are looking for the uh, natural resources that Namibia has. And we have entered into various agreement, for example,
example, we have got a memorandum of understanding with the EU. We are trying to enter into various other memorandum of understanding with Japan we have, and we are looking for similar type of agreements, similar type of connections and partnership with the USA. And therefore, we are trying to see the connection about how can we have our critical raw materials. For example, we have got a mining company that is mining graphite in Namibia, and we would like to see their graphite getting access to the American market. So that is really the synergies that we are looking for. Are there some kind of synergies and agreements you're hoping to gain at your session today? So sometimes you do not necessarily get the, uh, the agreements at the session. The session is about spreading the message. So yes, in investment uh, promotion, you have got really making a connection. You have got creation, uh, creating awareness, telling people what you have, what you're looking for. And then, of course, they listen. And hopefully after that, they ask you a few queries. And then they have to go back to their... Uh, uh, to their boards, to their governance structures, have conversations, see how what you have told them fits in their strategies, and hopefully within a shorter time than normal cycle uh, allows. Yungtad normally said that it can take up to three years for an investor that you have spoken about, you have spoken to, to just come and visit your country. We are hoping to shorten that period that after we have come face to face with investors, they will come to Namibia and talk to us face to face in less than a year, hopefully. And that's it for this Focus on Special, with me, David Rolamo, reporting from Gaborone, Botswana. Until next time, goodbye.